Well, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship at United and a special welcome to those folks who are online with us as well and visitors that are with us. We are glad you're here. Um, during, last yesterday, we met with the council uh, and um, I asked them as they left to think about one thing they wanted each to accomplish either in their area um, for the year or for the next six months to come. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you too, as, as a participant at United, what's one thing in ministry you would like to accomplish in this place or in the, in, in the world um, to have a goal? Put it on your refrigerator, put it by your bedside, something to remind you to say, yeah, setting goals sometimes is a good, good thing to be thinking about. So that's my encouragement for you. But we had a wonderful time together, I hope. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> And uh, well, enjoyed the time. Up today, so. so, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> most of them did come back, so that's good. Um, maybe, you know, um, uh, there, there are possibilities. Maybe you saw uh, in your email um, uh, something from Dan, and that's on God's work, our hands. And I thought Crystal was going to be here. Crystal? Hey, this, where I'm are here. you, Crystal? I'm here. Chris, Chris oh, I'm there, here. there she is. Oh, oh I thought you weren't here for a second. What, it's, what's it's, going on? It's I, been know. a rough morning, Eric. It's been a rough it's morning. It's been a rough morning. I had, I had to find the notebooks, and I had to find the towels, and I had to find the, the backpacks, and the, the kids had to bring their gardening things, uh, and I had to get ready to cook. I'm just feeling exhausted. But, but, but why, why, why did you have to get all that stuff this week? Well, because we're doing God's work our hands. Uh, that's not this week, Crystal. It, it, oh, dear. Uh, <laughs> Crystal, that's, that's on September 11th. So you were saying I should do this again? Yes. <laughs> I, I'm saying, oh, guys, <laughs> we got problems. Well, so, so let me think. What, what, what are these going to be for? Well, those are school kits. But I'm, I'm a little worried because I don't think I can bring everything for the school kits. You, you don't, I think I need some help. Yeah, you don't have to bring it all. All of you, we got to help Crystal because or else <laughs> she's going to be overwhelmed. So it, up there, you'll see sign-ups for Lutheran World Relief. So there, there's some of that stuff. Um, what, what else did you... Well, I got, I got some canned food, but the grocery store was crazy, so I didn't get a lot. D could I get some help with that, too? Well, do you think we can all help bring food for Food for Lane County by September 11th also? That, that would be helpful, okay? Beautiful bags. Beautiful bags. So where are those bags? The, are they out there? They're, they're out there. They're out there. Oh, next the, to the school supplies. Oh, yeah. There's more bags out there. So grab a bag and fill it up and bring it back. And what else? Well, there's going to be some yard work that's so, done, so I brought my tools, but, you know, it would go a lot faster with more people. That is true, because you should not have to do all the work, Crystal. That's so true. Well, uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, did you, I, I think Dan forgot to put the date on that last email. That's probably why you messed it up. Oh, uh, Dan, it's Dan, intern Dan's fault. It's yeah. the intern, it's yeah. the intern. So on September 11th, you'll see that, that intern Dan sent out a wonderful email that allows you to sign up for one of these projects. Maybe, or, and a couple other possibilities too. Maybe you okay. want to come and write letters for... Oh, there's the, I didn't even remember. There's so much, Eric, I didn't even remember yes. the letters. So we are going to do, for Bread for the World, we're going to do some letter writing. We also need some people to help prepare the meal. We're going to join with Emmaus and talk about what we've all done for God's work, our hands. What else? Um, well, well, there's some hygiene kits that we're going to put together, too, that we're finishing up from spring. Okay. So if, there, if you'd prefer to pick up some towels or things, that's out there in the narthex also. Candy Snook has put together a display that says what we need to reach our goals. If people looked at that. That would be wonderful. Wonderful. All right. All right. So maybe one of your goals, maybe you can accomplish your goal just by being part of our God's work, our hands. Crystal, thank you for, for being so honest. 
just a little early. Okay, so go come, take come a nap back. now, yeah, Eric. Go take a nap. Hey. Check check it out. So so. So, out, out in the narthex, if you are not one that likes to do things online, no out in the narthex is also the possibility of signing up for one of the things. So, so there's a lot of possibilities. We wanted something that would hit all ages and abilities. So, do sign up, be a part, it'll be a nice festive day. We're talking about keeping our worship service shorter that day so then we can get out to do our, our items and then join together at Emmaus for a, not a potluck, but um, a, a luncheon, and we'll figure out more about that coming up here. Um, book group, uh, we'll be re reading um, Jaber Crow by Wendell Berry, and so that's happening next week. I uh, know that that's going on. Today is uh, uh, informal picture day for those who want to have their pictures taken. I saw Denise out there. Did you decide you want to do that outside? I thought we might try it on the bench. Okay, so come have a cup of coffee, and if you're willing, we'll kind of line you up at different times and have a picture taken, either as an individual or as a family, and make sure we get it added to Breeze and be able to print out some copies um, so we have that. So. It's going to be right out here after the service. Just we'll be rotating through. Either Dan or I will help Denise kind of get, get people set for that. Thank you, Denise, for taking those. She's just taking them with her phone. Hope you can be part of that. Um, our final hymn today, we printed it as 587 under the same title. Pastor Eric didn't catch it. It's supposed to be 588 um, it, to a tune we all know. Same words. If you want to use your hymnal to follow the tune, it's fi actually 588 in your ELW, which is on your side. Any other announcements that I'm forgetting for the good of the community? We're here. Yeah. John. So, yeah. Um, I know everybody just had an ice cream social. Um, at my organization, Habitat for Humanity, we're doing a, an ice cream social this afternoon from 12 to 3. If you'd like to stop by, it is a fundraiser. Okay. And it's towards the Habitat build in Springfield. But we have information about the houses that we're building there. If you'd like to learn any more, um, I have a card. You can just ask me after the search. Perfect. Just catch John. John, yep. For Habitat for Humanity. So that's from 12 to 3 today. Thanks, John. With no other announcements, we invite you to stand as we begin our worship. We bless you, almighty God, for the gift of water, for the oceans that surround the earth, for the Mackenzie and the Wilmette Rivers, and the long-time watershed that you provide our community. We bless you, O God, for the waters of this earth. We bless you, O God, for the waters of this earth. We honor you, merciful God, for showering us with water, for the rain that nourishes the plants and trees, for the floods that restore the fields, for the dew that freshens dry places. We honor you, O oh God, for the waters you send. We honor you, O oh God, for the waters you send. We glorify you, gracious God, for the waters of baptism, for the water of the Jordan that washed our Lord Jesus, for the water that baptized the believers of, on Pentecost, for the waters that illuminate us with your word, for the water that pours out the gift of your spirit. For the water that bathes in, in the church universal, the Orthodox, the Roman Catholic, the Protestants, the Pentecostals, the Evangelicals, and the Imp Independents. We glorify you, O oh God, for the waters of baptism. We glorify you, O oh God, for the waters of baptism. We worship you, O oh God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty, merciful, and gracious, well of forgiveness, you receive us. Cup of cold water, you refresh us. Pool of rebirth, you renew us. To you comes the worship of all your people, now and forever. To you comes the worship of all your people, now and forever. Amen. Amen.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the community of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, oh God, judge eternal, your love, justice, and hate oppression, and you call us to share your zeal for truth. Give us courage to take our stand with all the victims of bloodshed and greed and follow your servants and prophets to look to the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May be seated. <laughs> Here, you can take this. Our psalm for today I invite you to listen to me sing the refrain once, join me in the refrain, and then I will sing the verses and invite you to come in on the refrain. Second reading is from Isaiah chapter 58. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong. And you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt. You shall rise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach the restorer of streets to live in. You refrain from trampling the Sabbath, from pursuing your own interests on my holy day. If you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests, or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord. And I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, 
for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. The word of the Lord. This time I'd like to invite any children that are brave enough to come, come close to me. I want to have a little conversation with you, so come on up. So. You said, have a seat, and thanks for being here. So, so what are these called? These are called shades or sunglasses, and I'm not wearing this because I am so cool I have to wear shades. I'm not wearing it for that reason. I look like an FBI person. Well, what these are, these are actually special sunglasses. When I go golfing, I often hit the ball to each side, meaning it gets in the rough. And these are glasses that help me so I can find the golf ball better. <laughs> you know why? Because I'm colorblind. What? I'm colorblind. There's certain colors that I can't see real well. Like between red and green, when they're right together, sometimes I can't tell which is which. But these are something that help me so they, they strike, certain images come out. Here's the thing I think. I think all of us are blind in some way. And to point this out, Jesus, we hear a story today about this woman who is bent over. And meaning she was like this. She's bent over. And if somebody asked her, she couldn't straighten up to look up. And for 18 years, she was this way. And she tried to look up, but she couldn't see. So maybe she was blind with things up here. But the thing that Jesus does is he notices her. He sees her in the crowd, and he tells her to come close. Because Jesus really has a different way of seeing. In a, in a way, we could say Jesus has a different kind of glasses that he wears. They are glasses that are filled with kindness, where he is slow to anger and quick to love. Can you all say that with me? Slow to anger, quick to love. What Jesus wants all of us to do is notice people like that bent over woman. And when Jesus sees her, he touches her, and she is able to stand up and suddenly she can see better. She can see all who are around and she can look Jesus right in the eye. So I want you, every time maybe you put on some sunglasses, to think about, oh, I got these sunglasses on there to protect me from the sun. But Pastor Eric said, when I put these on, to try to see as Jesus would want me to see. And Jesus wants you to see people and then notice them Maybe it's to shake their hand, maybe in COVID not, but maybe it's just to go up to them and say something kind, whether they are somebody that is bent over, where they are somebody that looks lonely. Maybe they are just somebody that you notice that you would like to say hi to. Those are having the glasses that Jesus wants you to wear, okay? So can you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious God, thanks for being with us for being slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Help us to see people and be kind to them. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We've got to do this big and wide. Amen. All right. Thank you for coming up and helping me with my children's sermon. Yeah. Oh, I do, Junior. I love it. And if you want to do children's church, you can go with Crystal.
The Holy Gospel according to Luke. Lord, you, o Christ. Now, Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and was quite unable to stand up straight. And when Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. And we laid his hands on her. Immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath day. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites, does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or his donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? And when he said this, all his opponents were put to shame and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things that Jesus was doing. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Praise to you, O Christ. Did you see her? The woman is simply known by scholars as the bent over woman. We have all known this woman. We have known her as we have passed by her in the grocery store. We have known her as we have passed by him on the street corner. We have known them in churches past and present, looking at us with eyes straining to see the one who has greeted them. We have seen this woman in ourselves. Seen her when we have longed to be noticed, to be seen for more than how we look. Don't we know that part of being followers of Jesus is having the eyes to see. Following Jesus also is finding the words to say and having the touch to give. Following Jesus has to do with using all of who we are. Now in no small part, we find that following Jesus has something to do with Sabbath. Sabbath is about coming to church and placing our souls, placing all of who we are in reception mode, ready to receive and worship the one who gives us life. And Sabbath is more than Sunday morning. It is trust in the life given to us. Sabbath is a way of life. It is a way of life that does not unduly blame others for our problems or ignore others in their difficulties. The bent over woman in our story today is seen by Jesus. For 18 years, we can assume she was close to the synagogue, largely ignored as people are who don't fit the touchable part of society. And when she was seen, she was likely only seen for her limitations. But Jesus sees, Jesus speaks, and Jesus touches. Jesus sees her for who she is. He calls her a daughter of Abraham, a daughter of Sarah, and a child of God first. Jesus speaks. Jesus speaks exactly what she needs to hear. You are set free from your ailment. 
And Jesus touches her as one who has more value than she would have believed. She is more important than rules set forth, more important than even the tried and true rituals of synagogue practice. Through sight, word, and touch, the woman is able to straighten up, see God for who God is, and then get about worshiping. Perhaps she used the words from our psalm this morning. Look at them again, maybe, as you are reflecting after communion. Psalm 103. They're in your hymnal. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquity? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the pit? Who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? Who satisfies you with good as long as you live so that your youth is renewed like the eagles? The Lord works vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known the ways of Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love. Beautiful words. Imagine how all of a sudden, every single one of these beliefs about God, the bent over woman could now feel in her standing up straight body. In a moment of lectionary brilliance, we are given a glimpse into the true sense of what it means to praise God. The Psalms, they are not just words, they are utterances of the soul. Embodied faith, when faith is challenging, when faith is uplifting, and when faith is all the way and all those things in between. Oh, there were rules for the Sabbath. But Jesus wants to teach his followers the purpose of Sabbath. We're being taught that Sabbath is a way of life that proclaims our dependence upon the one who blesses us and calls us to trust in the life we are given to live. Ah, but trust is a hard thing. The bent over woman could have succumbed to her ailment, but she kept showing up, hoping to be healed, hoping to be seen, hoping to be made whole. The healing really begins when she realizes she has been seen by Jesus. And then the crowd, as Jesus moves in, his attention begins to be pointed to what Sabbath is all about. Jesus has something to show leaders of the synagogue, the leaders in the church, to see that when you are able to see how Jesus sees, it's not just another perspective, but an alternative way of living and leadership. Our true worship is responding with our bodies to see what Jesus sees and respond with all of who we are. Our calling is always first to see as Jesus sees. That's what so many don't understand and even seem to reject, that when God does what is the nature of God, mercy, grace, and love, then mercy, grace, and love are then how we are to be toward one another. It truly doesn't cost us anything to come with the kindness of Christ. The Lord is kind and merciful. 
Jesus first greets us kindness. And make no mistake about it, Jesus sees you today. He sees what causes you to be bent over, hiding a part of yourself away. He sees what you are unable to show another soul, and he loves you just as you are, bent over and broken, standing up straight and proud, and all those levels in between. We all know that when we are seen truly as we are, well, it's a humbling experience. Hear Jesus say to you today, be set free from that which holds you. What fear keeps you holding your breath? What addiction is suffocating you? What worry is keeping you up at night? The one who conquers sin, death, and the devil, all those devils that plague you, proclaims to you today release from all that is keeping you from lifting your head, lifting your eyes. Jesus will touch you today. Maybe it will be in the sharing of the peace, the embrace from the loved one, a hand outstretched, a bite of bread, a sip of wine. When we are loved for whom we are in all aspects of our life, well, that gives us reason to bless others as we have been blessed. You're given some gifts today. The gift of sight. The gift of speech. The gift of touch. God is able to use all of who you are. God is able to reach into your soul, your whole being, and help you begin to see with new eyes. Look at the bent over woman in your midst. Notice her in yourself. She will not be defined by the pain, the ailment, or her troubles. She will be set free, that new freedom, to bless God. And it's not a one-time thing. The sense that is given in this story today is that this blessing that she begins and this praising that she begins to do just doesn't happen after she starts to look up. But she blesses God then continuously. And we can presume the blessing of God will not focus on the 18 years lost, but the new possibilities to bless God in her daily life. It's a life that will be lived in Sabbath. A life that trusts in the life she has been given, now used in love, kindness, and service toward others. May we only have the eyes to see, the voice to speak, and the hands to touch. Amen.
Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to all people of God. Merciful God. You satisfy the needs of all creatures, protect the habitats of fish and birds, repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster, that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive us. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Energize our community organizers and activists to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental and emotional or physical distress. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Today, we pray for all people who are in 12-step groups. For Michael, Katrina, for Dale, Juniper, for all who suffer from depression and anxiety, for Lowell, and Bill, we pray for members of our congregation who are dealing with COVID. For whom else do we pray for this day? For all who suffer from chronic pain. For all who suffer from chronic pain. For great granddaughter Marilla. We pray for all democracies around the world and institutions that are, are threatened by discord. For Jane and her family. For Jane and her family. For Marilee and Susie. Merciful God. Generations bless your holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we receive forever, so that we rest forever in you. Merciful God, we give thanks for Lloyd, Kate, Natalie, Everett, Anna Lee, Alex, Ava, Jeff, Bob, and Michael, who celebrate their baptismal anniversaries this week. We give thanks for flowers that adorn our space, and thanks for times to gather. For what else do the people of God give thanks today? For the children of United and all the children of the world. For the children of United and all the children of the world. for our cool evening. For Damon Bold's new job as a metal shop teacher at Willamette High School and he starts tomorrow. Woo!
for Damon Bold as he begins a new job tomorrow as a metal shop teacher in the Lamet. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with one another. Come back together. <laughs> As we're coming back together for in this worship service, we'll get there. <laughs> during worship, but there is a place out that you can donate after worship or online. Any and every gift is a blessing to this community, and we thank everyone who has helped this so far. Oh, you gonna split us up? oh yes, for our, um, we're going to have part one be everyone on this side, and part two everyone over here. <laughs> You have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field, and equip us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right and solitary that we should, at all times and in all places, offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection to open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the church on earth and the hosts of heavens, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. God, we praise you for creating the heavens and the earth. We bless you for bringing Noah and his family through the waters of the flood, for freeing your people Israel from the bonds of slavery, and for sending your son to be our redeemer. We give you thanks for Jesus, who, living among us, healed the sick, fed the hungry, and with the love stronger than death, gave his life for others. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat this. This is my body given for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And again after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in the remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, his life-giving death and glorious resurrection, we await your promised life for all this dying world. Breathe your spirit on us and on this bread and on this cup. Carry us into your arms from death to life, that we may live as your chosen ones, clothed in the righteousness of Christ. Through all him, all honor and glory are yours. Almighty Father, with the Holy Spirit, in your holy church, both now and forever. Amen. Going together with the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. This morning we'll have two stations up front. Please come through the center aisle as you come forward. We do have gluten-free elements. If that is something you need, just let your server know that. The inner ring is juice and the outer ring is wine. It's white grape juice and red wine today. And we will first commune those online as the communion servers come forward. The body of Christ, given for you. And the blood of Christ, shed for you. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the gifts of his body and blood, strengthen, keep, and unite us now and forever. Amen. Amen. Life-giving God, through this meal you have bandaged our wounds and fed us with your mercy. Now send us forth to live for others, both friend and stranger, that all may come to know your love. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Because the final hymn is 588, not 587. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God turn his face towards you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Love your neighbor. Thanks be to God.